Hey, that's right. Today we are going to be looking at TS925 Plus, how fast it actually can perform. So we're going to fill it with SSDs, we're going to put some NVMEs in there, and then we're going to test how fast it can build RAID 5, how fast it can rebuild RAID 5, RAID 10 building times as well. We will also check what speeds we can achieve when we copy data through a USB port, how fast we can upload to this RAID and download from the RAID, how fast we can transfer files remotely using Synology Quick Connect service. We will also set up multi-channel SMB and check how fast speeds we can actually get by combining these two LAN ports. But before we start, I will quickly go through pros and cons about this box so you have a general idea how good this box actually is. So let's start with pros and it comes with a better CPU compared to previous model. Instead of having two cores, now you're having four cores. Also, it still has most popular features like active backup for business, which allows you to back up any server or virtual machine or uh, desktop machines at the core level. Also has high availability, so you can connect two of these NASs together, so there is a failover just in case one NAS fails. And also you have dual LAN, which means you can enable load balancing if one LAN port drops, another one will take over. It has ECC memory inside this box, which allows you to run smooth services like email server, or virtual machines uh, without worrying that uh, there could be some corrupt data on the memory. It also comes with NVMe slots. We have installed Adlink NVMe's in there. We're going to look at those speeds later as well. And obviously the most popular feature from Synology is SHR. It allows drive mixing. Different capacity drives can be mixed. Talking about drives, uh, I'm going to move on to the negative side. So it has drive locking at this point. There is no other branded drives allowed apart from Synology drives. But I did install Kingston 480GB DC600M SSDs and they seem to be supported at this point. So yeah, that's the biggest negative so far. The hard drives are being locked to Synology and also NVMEs are only allowed if they are Synology SSDs. Talking about NVMEs as well, uh, the negative is that they have capped the speeds. It's only going up to 5 to 700 megabytes second per each slot. So you can't take advantage of uh, NVMe that has a couple of thousands of megabytes a second potential speed. Also, Synology removed 10 gigabit upgrade port, so now we are uh, limited to somewhere around 600 megabytes a second when we are combining those two 2.5 gig LAN ports at the back. So there is speed reduction with this new model. Also, there is still no sign of a graphics chip inside this thing. Since they introduced Ryzen type of CPUs in there, you cannot do transcoding with these NASs apart from maybe 1080p videos. There are only two USB ports, one at the front, one at the back, and they're old 5 gigabit speed USB ports. Not very fast. And finally inside this NAS there is a only 4 gigabit RAM. You can add up to 32 gigabytes if you want to. So let's move on to speed tests now. So the first test we're going to be doing is uh, how fast we can boot this NAS. So we press the start button and wait for the admin panel to appear in our browser. And it takes one minute, two seconds. So let's continue the booting process and see how long it's gonna take for SMB service to be available so people can start storing files on the NAS. And it takes one minute, 31 seconds. Next test is gonna be shutdown test. Shutdown times are very important when you connect USB because you want it to shut down within one or two minutes before the battery dies. Otherwise, if the shutdown is not completed properly, you might uh, lose data or have some corrupted data. So let's uh, start the shutdown process and see how long it's going to take to shut this thing down. Obviously, there's no apps installed, so it's going to take 19 seconds. That's very good score. Now we're going to move on to RAID 5 building. So we're going to be using four SSDs. Obviously, if you are using hard drives in there, it will take much, much longer time to build or rebuild RAID 5. So for testing reasons, we are using SSDs. So let's start a RAID building process. How long is it going to take to build RAID 5? And it takes 18 minutes and 30 seconds. That's pretty good score. Now we are going to replace one of those drives in the RAID 5 with a blank drive and see how long it's going to rebuild RAID. This is very important because if second drive fails, your data is lost. So you want it to be very quick. So let's introduce a new drive and see how long it's going to take to rebuild this RAID. And it took only 68 seconds. That's a very good score. But Synology does require data scrubbing. And that 
hours 27 minutes and 46 seconds. Since this is compulsory from Synology, I'm going to use this score as a total rebuild time. We will also test how long it's going to take to build RAID 10. This is a very popular choice among video editors. That's the, usually the fastest RAID. So let's start the RAID and see how long it's going to take. And you can see that building RAID 10 takes no time at all. It actually takes longer to create a volume rather than RAID. And that's altogether 66 seconds. That's amazing. Now let's move on to USB copy tests. This is also an important test because you want to either transfer data from your camera or DAS box or external drive to a NAS as quickly as possible. Another way around, you want to back up your NAS as quickly as possible. Since this NAS has a very slow USB, let's see how long it's going to take to transfer 19 gigabyte file. So let's copy from USB to a NAS using NVMe external SSD. And the speeds we are getting is around 5 to 600 megabytes seconds. So we can see there is some sort of bandwidth cap. And it took 43 seconds to transfer 19 gigabyte files. Now we're going to copy this 19 gigabyte file from RAID 5 to NVMe. So let's copy and paste. And you can see the speed we're getting is around 600 megabytes a second. And it took 32 seconds to copy from RAID 5 to NVMe. So we can see here that before we were limited by USB speeds, but now we are potentially limited by PCIe lane, which only allows X1 speeds. But that took 32 seconds. Now we are going to copy from one NVMe to another NVMe. So we copy this 19 gigabyte file from one NVMe to another, and you can see the speeds are limited to 450 megabytes a second. It's actually very bad. So it took 44 seconds to copy from one NVMe to another. Also, thanks to Dave Russell, he has created scripts that allowed me to actually use third-party NVMe since I don't have any Synology NVMe's. So I had to run two scripts. One is Synology HDD database, which allows all hard drives to be used, as well as all SSDs and NVMe's. And then on top of that, you run a script, Synology M2 volume, which allows you to create volume on NVMe's. Okay, let's move on to RAID 5 speed tests. So we are going to be connecting two LAN ports and enabling multi-channel SMB. If you want to see how to do that, uh, let me know. I'm going to upload that uh, footage later on if you want to. Same about NVMEs, how to use third-party NVMEs, third-party hard drives. Do let me know if you want that sort of content. So we connect two cables, direct connection between Synology and a Minis Forum Mini PC. I set manual IP addresses on each end, each LAN. If you want to see how to set up SMB multi-channel and direct connection between these two devices, also let me know. So then we do download test from the NAS to a desktop. And these are the speeds we were getting before SMB multi-channel was enabled. And that's 2.5 gig speed. And this is the connection you can find at the back of this NAS. You can see you can get full speeds of 2.5 gigabit connection. So now with SMB multi-channel enabled, let's see how long it's going to take to download some files through this combined LAN connection. And you can see the speeds we are getting is around 500 megabytes a second, double the speed, full 2.5 gigabit speeds. Pretty good. We're going to upload to the NAS and we're also getting speeds around 500 megabytes a second. So total upload time for 90 gigabyte file is 45 seconds. Now let's use NAS Performance Tester application and upload 1,500 megabyte files to a NAS and from a NAS and see the averages. And it took one minute, 15 seconds to go through five loops up and down. So now let's test remote connection, how fast we can transfer one gigabyte file using Synology proxy service which is called Synology Quick Connect. Normally Synology caps this speed around two megabytes a second, sometimes even slower. Let's have a look how long it's gonna to take to transfer a one gigabyte file. As you can see, speeds are fast at the beginning, but then they drop to 500, 400 kilobytes a second. So it took 20 minutes, 24 seconds for one gigabyte file to be transferred. Now we're gonna test one minute 4K file how long it's going to take to actually play
play that file without downloading how long is it going to take to play that file to force the transcoding and we are using first a Synology Photos app to stream this file and it took 3 minutes 28 seconds to watch this one minute video which is very very bad because without buffering you cannot watch any 4k content using this NAS then I did the same test with a Plex how long it's going to take me to watch this one minute video using Plex transcoding and the results were not that great either they were just buffering all the time and it took 2 minutes 32 seconds slightly better than Snorgy own app but still not acceptable and that is it now we can look at the final results so the top speeds we were getting was around 5 to 600 megabytes second up and down transcoding took around 3 minutes rate to NVMe 32 seconds NVMe copy 44 seconds USB transfer 43 seconds remote file transfer 20 minutes and that's performance testing 1 minute 15 seconds transferring up and down was around 45 seconds building rate 5 took 66 seconds building raid 5 18 minutes 30 seconds rebuilding 27 minutes 46 seconds booting this NAS to admin panel one minute and SMB service one and a half minutes and to shut this thing down took only 19 seconds I hope this video was helpful and is going to help you to decide if this NAS is right for you if it's fast enough for your business or for your home you can also use these tables to compare maybe you want to use alternative to this NAS you can have a look at those results and decide which NAS is the best for you. If you like this content, if you want to see something similar like this, follow the channel. Otherwise, let me know in comments what you want to see so I can work on those videos and upload them. So thank you for watching and see you next time.